As you'll undoubtedly realise, every project must contain at least one track, be it a video with its parallel audio track, or a sole video track with no sound, and this minimal amount of one track can contain a minimum of one event. Although, to be honest, I'm scratching my head as to why you'd want a project of just one event, especially if the length of the events were only quite short, as they are here. Anyway, what we're going to look at in this tutorial is we're going to look at work with tracks and as we've already seen the track list is where all our events get populated so we'll look more closely at the track list and how we can navigate around any events we've got on our track list by using the navigation and zoom buttons so as you can see here I've got four tracks and these are made up of two pairs of two video files with their associated audio components Incidentally, remember what I said earlier about video tracks higher up the track list obscuring any of those video tracks below? Well, that doesn't apply to audio. Audio tracks get merged or blended together. Let me show you what I mean. I'll mute the bottom audio track by clicking here. Now this will allow my top video and associated audio to play until here. Then the bottom video will play without its audio. Okay, so let's watch and listen to this. So I'll hit play now. Right, lots of drums for video 1 with its embedded audio, and then because we muted the audio for video track 2, then the band played away, but we couldn't hear the audio. Right, I'll now unmute the second audio track. Notice at the start where our first video is. Well, we see our video and its associated audio, and also below we see the second video track with its associated or embedded audio as well. But when I play this back in a moment, we are only going to see, as we've just seen, the video on video track one being visible to us because it obscures what's below. But as I said, this doesn't apply to the audio. What's going to happen is we'll watch the video for video track one, but we'll also hear here, it's embedded audio merged or blended in with the audio, despite not being able to see its associated video, but we'll also merge the audio from audio track 2. And it's only when we get to the end of video track 1, where it cuts short there, that video track 2, because it's now not obscured, will be able to be displayed. Now, a warning, this audio playing back like this, well, it's going to be a cacophonous noise and it will distort. That said, I'm going to artificially turn down the playback, but you'll notice it distorts because the level meter over here, you'll see some red warning clip indicators as the audio becomes too loud as a result of both audio tracks playing back together. Right, as I say, be warned, here goes. <laughs> Okay, awful. Right then, as we are becoming aware it's the track list that offers information about the track, not necessarily the event or multiple events on that particular track, rather the track list controls and offers information about the whole track. And you can see this with video track 1 there. It's set to 100% opacity, meaning that this will obscure anything below it on video track 3. Additionally, its volume on track 2 is set to 0 dB, i.e. optimum level. And therefore, when we listen to this back a few moments ago, in isolation, just one audio track is fine because it's playing back at optimum level. But once mixed in with the second audio track, well, as you saw and heard, two audio tracks playing back at optimum level create distortion. Now, if you want to resize these tracks or scroll around, then by moving right over to the right of our screen, then you'll notice this vertical slider, this vertical scroll slider, which allows me to just drag down to move down to all the lower tracks or of course back up again. We have seen this previously. And if we want to zoom into our tracks horizontally, then there is a scroll slider down across the bottom of the timeline. At this resolution, it covers the entire width, so it doesn't actually scroll, but we have seen it before anyway. However, it does have another trick up its sleeve. Can you just about see at the beginning of this scroll bar that there are a couple of lines? 
This allows us to not scroll along, but to zoom in. And notice as I roll over it, my cursor changes to that double-ended arrow. And if I left click on that and then drag to the right, then effectively what I'm doing is I'm zooming in around that point. And therefore now I can use the drag slider to move back to the start. So I'll just left click on the scroll somewhere there will do and drag it over to the left once more and I'll do the same thing but at the end of this scroll bar now where those two lines are just left click and then by dragging towards where the events are at the end there well as you can see that allows me to refocus in on those particular events zooming in close around these events OK, and right down in the bottom right hand corner, you'll also notice that there are some zoom in and zoom out buttons where we've got the plus and the minus buttons, plus being the zoom in, of course. I'll click this a couple of times and then the minus button to zoom out again. You'll have noticed we also get duplicate plus and minus zoom in and out buttons there. And this is for the vertical axes. Now this adjusts the track height. Now I'm not going to use those just yet. We'll see them in action in a second. And another way that we can zoom in on a specific area is to grab this. Well, it looks like a magnifying glass. Simply click on there. And this is the zoom edit tool. And then once you've got it selected, come over to an event, left click and drag a range. And instantly, once we deselect, then that particular range short as it is, fills our timeline. OK, we've zoomed in by that much. OK, now I'll use my horizontal scroll minus button at the bottom there to zoom back out again. And now I will adjust my track height too by clicking here a few times. OK, now another way of doing the same thing is by coming up to edit and then dropping down to editing tool and then just simply fly out to the right and down to zoom. And you'll see now my cursor changes back to that magnifying glass. Now I'm not going to use it. We've just seen how this works. OK, then. So that's a quick look around these navigation buttons or navigation tools and how the track list controls what we see along our timeline.